The experience of shopping for a gaming PC is different for everyone. On one side you have the enthusiasts who use every possible website and source to get the 100% best bang for your buck in price to performance, and sometimes you have people that have a higher priority of just getting the parts as quickly as possible, building the PC, and getting straight to gaming. I've made videos for both types of people over the last few years, and today we're focusing on that second group building a PC as quickly as possible, and we're doing that by only using parts available on Amazon Prime. To be 100% transparent, I was sitting at the beach house last week after the kids went to bed and I had to get a video project idea out on paper so we could start executing on it. That way we had a project to work on as soon as I got back. I limited myself to a $500 budget and again only using brand new parts that shipped to my house with two day shipping. This was supposed to be a very easy project that we could jump right into after my vacation but things went south quickly and there was even some more part scamming and chaos involved. Either way though, $500 Amazon Prime build, let's go. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall and you probably you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18 and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have windows keys but also a ton of other stuff such as office and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total so activate windows today and remove that nasty watermark. And don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. So for a quick and dry $500 Amazon parts build, we literally only need seven parts. We're not using any extra CPU coolers, case fans, RGB lights, or even PSU cable extensions. I know, you've probably been looking at this build the entire time during the intro and thinking, where are Zach's PSU cable extensions? Wait a minute! You. But when you're limited to $500 using only brand new parts, you really should not include them in there. In order to get the best price to performance with our limited budget and single website supplier, it's critical to nail down the CPU and motherboard combo first. I originally wanted to go with the Intel i3-10100F because it only costs $70 every day of the week brand new, but the problem is that I couldn't find any motherboards under $100 at the exact time that I was purchasing. You may recall Linus's recent $500 new parts bill guide where he squeezed in a 12100F. That would be great but he had to make some other sacrifices in the build that I'm not comfortable with, so we'll save money here on the CPU. The one I did decide to go with is the Ryzen 5 5500, and this is a very capable chip for gaming. Honestly, every time I use a 10100F or a 10105F, somebody's down in the comment section saying to use a 5500, so there you go. This is a six core and 12 threaded chip with a max boost of up to 4.2 gigahertz, and it's definitely no slouch. The only problem with the 5500 is that it costs way more than our Intel i3 options at $93 brand new, but again, the reason that I went with it is because of motherboard availability. I had several B450 and B450M models to choose from around 70-ish dollars when I was purchasing, so the total combo of the 5500 ended up being much cheaper than any Intel i3 combo that I could come up with. The motherboard I went with was supposed to be this MSI B450M-A Pro Max, which was clearly listed on Amazon Prime as a brand new part for $71 here, but we got scammed again and we were sent something else. I actually didn't even notice when building at first that this was a completely different motherboard model, but I did immediately recognized that something was fishy with the motherboard. When I opened up the box, we discovered that there was no IO shield included and also no M.2 standoff for our SSD. I immediately suspected that I was accidentally sent a used board instead of a new one, but again, I didn't notice that this was a completely different model than what I actually ordered. Honestly, it wasn't even a huge deal because this was still a micro ATX B450M board, which is what I needed, but the problem is that I figured this board wasn't Ryzen 5000 series ready, where the one that I ordered was. Because of the short project timeline of this video, I was sure to pick up a motherboard that specifically said Ryzen 5000 series ready so that we didn't have to waste time on updating the BIOS with a different CPU, but that backfired big time. We'll talk about that process later. As a spoiler alert, this shady AF motherboard of course did not come with an updated BIOS, so we had to swap in a different CPU, update the BIOS, and it was just a whole lot of fun. You gotta love when you add an extra hour to a project that was supposed to only take like 30 minutes. Do I detect a note of sarcasm? Baby is off the charts. Regardless though, we pressed on and next up was the RAM and this was literally the cheapest 2 by 8 gigabyte 3200 megahertz or higher kit that had a heat spreader on it and yeah, that was my only criteria for the search. It's the silicone power 2 by 8 gigabyte 3200 megahertz Zenith kit and honestly it doesn't look terrible but for 32 bucks brand new it's a solid choice. Honestly, my only problem with it is how they're still using this obnoxious 1990s plastic where you need scissors to get them open. That was ridiculous. And finally to finish off the motherboard prep we have the SSD and yeah, 
at 500 bucks, there's no way that I could fit a one terabyte drive in there. So I had to settle for this crucial P3 500 gigabyte NVMe drive that I got for $25 brand new. I literally just said in my last $500 build guide video that I'm using one terabyte drives from here on out. Finally got the one terabyte. This is probably gonna become the new norm. So that was a lie. But when you're limited to just Amazon and $500 for brand new parts, you need to make some sacrifices somewhere. If you're following this along at home, then I would definitely recommend just spending an extra $10 and getting a one terabyte model. There's your disclaimer. And speaking of disclaimers, we don't really need one with the power supply because this Apivia Prestige 600 watt model is actually a decent unit for budget builds. I've said this many times over the last year of this tough PSU deal hunting season that we're in, but this is actually a tier C model on the PSU tier list. So don't judge it based on the brand alone. Remember, it's not only about the brand when it comes to power supplies, it's more about the specific model. Yes, a PVA does make a couple of really bad power supplies, but this specific model was tested by the experts and it's rated high enough for budget builds like this. One thing I did with it though, is swap over the sticker from one side to the other. That way you can't see this ugly chart and branding inside our case's PSU basement window. And speaking of which, this is the Thermaltake Versa H18. And this is a pretty decent micro ATX option that only costs 50 bucks. There were a couple of case options that were available under $50 but I do have some sort of aesthetic standard as you're well aware and I didn't want to go any lower than what this has. If you absolutely can't go over your $500 budget then feel free to pick up these cheaper models that may not even have a tempered glass side panel but the Versa H18 is pretty renowned in our community for being a decent budget pickup so that's why I went with it. The case only comes with one pre-installed 120 millimeter fan in the back and nothing up front and for this video I actually did not install any other fans and we'll test out that cooling in the benchmarking section. And for the last part we of course have the graphics card and in order to maximize the price to performance of a $500 build like this, you know we had to go with none other than the RX 6600. This card is a beast in terms of bang for your buck value, even more so if you can pick up one for like $150 on the used market, but this XFX Swift 210 was the cheapest model available at the time of shopping, so I grabbed it for $210, ironically enough. You'll notice here that after I installed the GPU, I realized that the rear case fan's cable wasn't long enough to get to the motherboard header, so I had to uninstall the GPU, add one of these PWM extension cables, and then reinstall it back on here. This is one of the downsides with budget motherboards, by the way. So keep that in mind if your motherboard only has one extra PWM header up here above the graphics card. I'll link the PWM extensions that we buy along with everything else that we're talking about today down in the description. All in all, I didn't achieve the exact $500 target that I was hoping to get, but honestly, if you go any cheaper than what I have here, it's probably not worth it. We could drop down to eight gigabytes of RAM, which is what Linus did, but I definitely wouldn't recommend that. And we could also drop the GPU down to a 6500 XT, but I wouldn't recommend that either. Now, if you only have a very strict $500 budget, if you exercise some patience and snipe the good deals, you definitely could get this exact parts list with a motherboard that has an IO shield for around $500. But again, I was very pressed for time. Now, before we could benchmark it, here's where we instantly have problems because the PC wasn't booting and I instantly suspected that it was because the BIOS wasn't updated to support Ryzen 5000 CPUs, like I said earlier. It wasn't until I went to download the new BIOS that I noticed the model name of the motherboard that I typed in wasn't the same one that I remember buying. So here's where I confirmed my order receipt and fully realized that I got scammed. What happens is people will buy the motherboard that I originally wanted, but then they'll file a return and then return their old motherboard back to Amazon. So they essentially get a free upgrade. At least that's what I think happened. Amazon then sees that they got a motherboard back and sometimes cases like this slip through the cracks where it immediately gets set back on the shelves for someone else to purchase. Like me, of course. Now this has definitely happened to me several times over the few years of PC building. So don't just instantly think that even places like Amazon are 100 percent guaranteed because you can get scammed over there just like you can anywhere else. To be fair, Amazon does have a really good return policy, sometimes too good, clearly. And if I was a normal person, I would have just returned this, waited two more days and got another one. But we obviously didn't want to wait that long. So we proceeded with the project. I know it's not a great time in our community for me to be saying, oh, we pushed through with this project anyway because of our tight deadlines. But I don't think it's that big of a deal here. Again, this is an arbitrary $500 Amazon Prime build restriction, which isn't going to apply to most people. And I don't think we're going to be sabotaging any startup companies by pressing on with this project. And if I did wait for a new motherboard to come in, then I'd have to pay my employees a few extra hundred dollars to build it. Ooh. Never mind, that's probably too soon. So yeah, I did eventually get that BIOS updated because I had a spare Ryzen 5 2600 laying around and then the PC booted up just fine. So let's check out what this system is capable of and how those temperatures are with the inadequate cooling solution. First up, we tested 3D Mark's Time Spy and here's where you can compare the score of this one to our previous builds. This $500 Amazon Prime build cranked out a score of 7,889, honestly better than our previous build, but still not as high as you can get with a $500 used build where you'll be using every single website available. Here's also the GPU temperature 
temperatures that we got while they were under load for a bit. Perfectly fine temperatures, even without the front fans. But again, feel free to buy some if you feel more comfortable. Next up, we tested Apex Legends. And when using 1080p in high settings, we got an average of 176 FPS, which is honestly really high and you love to see it. After that, we got Modern Warfare 2 up there after waiting for a ridiculous 60 gigabyte update for whatever reason. And when using 1080p in balance settings, we got 132 FPS, which again is really solid. We also got some footage of Rust for you guys for the first time ever, I think. And I don't think anyone here at the ZTT HQ knows anything about this game, mind you. But here in 1080p with high settings, we got 118 FPS. And here's the other games that we tested. And these are all really great to see. The Ryzen 5 5500 and ARC 6600 is a deadly price to performance combination for a brand new $500 build. And this PC is absolutely zero problems playing any game in 1080p. And it's probably too late to mention this because the keyboard warriors have probably already said their piece down in the comment section. But I do think it's important to mention that I was about two beers deep when I was designing this build on vacation. From what I recall, the biggest problem was the case option, which was really frustrating because there's so many good sub $50 options available in Newegg, but Amazon is slacking in that department. To my credit though, I have purchased so many PC parts over the years while one or two beers deep. So I do think this is almost, if not completely as good as it gets with our restrictions. Hopefully you enjoyed this one though. Feel free to click the video that's on the screen now if you wanna see a different way of how to build a $500 build without any crazy restrictions. That one is honestly probably a little better.